<laughs> okay, that was stupid. <laughs> totally stupid. Hello, Brotherhood. It is me, your faithful Thomas or Beatty. <laughs> In the most typical YouTube tier list ever. <laughs> I'm sure you've seen these everywhere, these like tier lists of like loads of things. JoJo, uh, Call of Duty, anime. You've seen it all, tier lists. You pretty much know what they are. You just rank, you know, your favorite stuff from the S to the E whilst giving your opinion on them. So as for me, I decided to do an Assassin's Creed tier list because uh, Pahala, Assassin's Creed Pahala is coming out and as you, as you may know me, I'm a massive Assassin's Creed fan as you can probably tell. <laughs> and um, I thought as a, as a little bit of a game, well, eh, I guess you can call this a game talk, but like a mini game talk. Um, I just go through the Assassin's Creed games, what I think of them, what my you know, um, opinions on them are. A little bit of clarification I should add as well. Um, as you can see, I've ordered the games on the ways I've played them, all the way up to Chronicles Russia. As for the rest, I haven't played them, or, um, yeah, I guess there's no other explanation. So, um, I guess we'll get started then. So, the very first one. Assassin's Creed, the very first, the thing that started it all. Uh, what's really funny is that this isn't the first Assassin's Creed game I played, um, but this was the... When I when I had Assassin's Creed 3, the latest one, Assassin's Creed 1 was the last game I finished in that order I had, because it it's quite repetitive. Um, not to say that's a... Well, it depends on, I suppose, how you take it, but um, to me personally, it's... It's alright, you know, I don't really mind the pettiness of it because I do like the whole general investigation, you know, going into street markets and you have to rely on what the, you know, um, the Assassin Bureau said, you know, there wasn't like an easy marker saying, oh, go over there, or, oh, there's something over there, like, I think around about the halfway point, maybe sequence three, uh, the icons just disappear, so you have to rely on what the Bureau says. And I actually like that part, you know, doing your own little investigation. It kind of makes you feel like a, you know, Sherlock. The combat was extremely heavy, and uh, I was not the best of it. I kept dying constantly. <laughs> Maybe I just suck. Maybe that's why. But um, I do respect it a lot because it it set the foundation of what the series is. And Altair is an interesting character, guaranteed. He's a bit of a bit of a dick in the beginning like he's all high and mighty <laughs> but in the end he actually develops as a character he's actually thinking hmm actually you know what maybe I was being a bit of a dick <laughs> so I think I'll place Assassin's Creed on the B on B here not um the reason why I don't put it in the A tier is because again it's the repetition of the game you know it's some it can get a bit boring sometimes but then again um it's the it's the core game of the franchise. It's something that's set in motion of what the games are. And I highly respect it for it. And plus the music is just so criminally underrated. I very recommend you give it a watch, you know, when you have the time. Anyhow, next one. So, Assassin's Creed, Altair's Chronicles. Uh, I didn't actually like this one, funny enough. I thought that the controls were a bit odd. I mean, you can't do much if it's on a DS. There's not much open exploration, so I did, uh, when I played the game, I did, you know, constantly remind myself that, like, you know, it's not on a console, so you won't be able to freely explore the world. Um, but even so, the, like, the, the story was not that interesting to me, like, it just, I for, I've forgotten most of it. It's been ages since I've played that game, and I, I can barely remember it. The, contro uh, the controls as well, like, I felt like sometimes it wasn't responsive, like, sometimes when I tried to assassinate an enemy, it wouldn't register, or when I tried to pickpocket someone, again, it didn't register at all, so it just made me frustrated with the game. So I'm going to have to put it at the bottom of the tier list because, one, I, I barely remember it, it was completely forgettable, and two, the controls were just utterly frustrating. So, on to the next game, I suppose. Assassin's Creed 2. Oh. Now, loads of people would say that Assassin's Creed 2 was kind of like the magnum opus of Assassin's Creed. It set... It... They're dead. It revolutionized, you know, the whole series, and I can understand why. Ezio Adotor is a fantastic character. They have improved a lot of stuff on the game, and they actually made the modern days. Actually, I forgot to say, uh, for the Assassin's Creed 1, the modern day segments, they're all right, you know. Uh, I don't really have much to say on them, but they're, they're all right. You know, what can you do? 
But anyhow, for the modern day segments in Assassin's Creed 2, it was actually a lot better. It actually gave you more freedom to explore with Desmond Miles, and it gave you, you know, it's something new. But I would say that Assassin's Creed 2, I would, yeah, I'll put it on the A list for now. Uh, combat was extremely improved, I would like to also add that. Um, but at the same time, uh, the enemies were kind of a bit annoying, but I, I guess that's just me, maybe I just suck. <laughs> But I do like the uh, the exploration of uh, you know Renaissance, Renaissance, yeah, during the Renaissance period in in Florence, Venice, and I can't remember what the other two were. But um, I really did enjoy exploring them. Plus, I'd been to uh, Florence on one of, on holiday, and it was absolutely beautiful. Um, the assassin, the side objectives as well in. Um, for the original Assassin's Creed didn't really have that many side objectives that were really, you know, worth it. I mean, they were kind of just like saving citizens and, and getting flags. But in Assassin's Creed 2, there were actually real interesting side objectives. They gave you assassin contracts, delivery contracts, the assassin tombs. It was, it, as many people said, it really changed how the Assassin's Creed series is. Um, I do think that the final boss fight in Assassin's Creed 2 could have been better. But then again, I suppose you can't do much because the main enemy of the game was Rodrigo Borges. I think that's how I pronounce his name. I could be doing it wrong. But he was a real life uh, character, so uh, if you were to kill him early, then it wouldn't really be historically accurate. So I suppose you can't really do much in the final fight. But, you know, I'm, ha I'm, I'm happy where it is. I put it on the A list. So I'm um, like, on to the next game. Now, Brotherhood. I mean. What can I say about Brotherhood? <laughs> it, it's fantastic, absolutely fantastic. And this is the game that actually got me into uh, the series. I, start, I started with Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Let's explain why I got into it then. So, uh, I suppose the um, I should probably talk about the, the modern day segments in the game. It's actually, they've improved on it a lot. Um, there was no, like you have, you have more freedom to explore like the modern day uh, Montagini, where, where like Ezio used to live, and uh, just playing as Desmond and seeing the contrast between the two, it's really interesting to me. Plus the um, the characters are lovable and the ending plot twist, or oh, magnum opus, really excellent. Um, as for the the main game. I can say it without a doubt that it is like fucking fantastic. I think one of the main things that people really liked about Assassin's Creed Brotherhood was because was that you get to create your own like um, brotherhood. You get to um, you get to recruit um, assassins and you can use them to aid you in battle. And I and I think many people loved this mechanic. I think it continued all the way till Assassin's Creed Three. I don't think it was. Yeah, it wasn't continued throughout the rest of the game. Yeah, no, not really. It was, it was all, it was all the way up to like Assassin's Creed Three, where they stopped the mechanic, which is kind of a shame because I did really like, you know, getting, uh, getting citizens to become assassins and training them, getting them equipment, upgrading them, sending them on missions. It was actually really enjoyable. The, um, the treasure hunts as well, really, really good. Uh, the armor of Romulus, uh, absolutely ace. It's, and the dagger is just. It's absolutely overpowered the dagger, but it's well worth it. It really helps you throughout the game. Plus the characters as well, like Cesare Borgia, or oh, he was a fantastic villain. Because um, he was kind of stereotypical, the villain, you know, his mustache twirling. <laughs> I'm the bad guy. <laughs> but um, it was interesting to put down like real life historical vig figures as the bad guys. I mean, Cesare has got a really interesting history background, and. Um, there's like loads of documentaries about the Borgia family, so I really recommend if you, you know, go ahead and watch them if you ever got the time. Oh yeah, the multiplayer. It also introduced um, the multiplayer aspect of the game, and I spent a bit of it on the multiplayer. I mean, the multiplayer is quite good. Um, I can't really say much about it because I, I never really dedicated a lot of time to the Assassin's Creed Brotherhood multiplayer, but it's still fun nonetheless. There's nothing bad about it. Well, nothing that I've come across personally. But with all that and said, there's no doubt I will put Assassin's Creed Brotherhood in the S tier. So, Assassin's Creed Revelations. 
Uh, funny enough, uh, this was my lowest, uh, before I had Assassin's Creed Chronicle, Assault Alter, did, 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 did. before I had Assassin's Creed Altair's Chronicles, I thought Revelations was kind of like my lowest rated game. It's not a bad game in any instance, not at all. Um, I just think that maybe the story could have been better. I mean, I, I really like it, how, I really like revisiting Altair because I think he deserves more. You know, in a, I see a lot of Assassin's Creed. Uh, how do I put? How do I put this? I think that there's. I don't see a lot of like Altair posts from like the Assassin's Creed official company post. Like I remember they did this like uh, alphabet of Assassin's Creed, and they didn't bother to put anything related to Altair in it, and I felt that was kind of disheartening. Plus, the you know Ezio had a remaster. Connor gets a remaster. Uh, Shay had a remaster, so where's Altair? You know, I feel like Assassin's Creed 1 should get a remaster. Um, because I think it's important to, rem to remind people that this is the original game, this is how it all started, and I think it would boost customer sales. Anyhow, uh, back to Revelation, sorry I got sidetracked. So, uh, what do I think about Revelations? It's alright, you know, um, the gameplay is pretty much the same. Uh, the hook blade of it was uh, was really helpful when it comes to parkouring. The characters, yeah, they were right. I mean, they Ezio, absolutely fantastic. His sidekick, I can't rem really remember. I'm so sorry. Like, I'm not even kidding. He barely shows up most of the time. He barely shows up, and like, he, he dies. So, um, when it when I when you actually find him, and you know he's dead. He plays this sound, sad soundtrack, but I didn't really feel sorry. I, I don't, I don't know if that's just my cold persona, but because there was barely little of him, I didn't really have the chance to really connect with him, to understand him. You know, so when he died, I, I could barely remember him. So sorry about that, <laughs> and I'm sorry if I can't remember his name. I, I really bad, but uh, I remember there was one part of Revelations that I really didn't like. Um, there was a part where I had to renovate a building in order to progress, but again, I didn't have a lot of money. It's only happened once in the whole entire Assassin's Creed franchise, and I, I'm glad they got rid of that because I wasn't really happy with it. I guess it, it kind of forced you to go out and, you know, renovate buildings to gain money, but sometimes I just want to play the story. I just want to continue. I don't want to be stuck, and I had to renovate this building that probably serves no concept to me whatsoever, but either way, it's, you know, it only happens one, well, it happens multiple times in this game, but it doesn't happen throughout, you know, the rest of the game. So, with that, I think I'll put it on the D list. So, it's an alright game, don't get me wrong. Uh, uh, the soundtrack, though, was absolutely amazing. It, it can, it, it's probably the most emotional Assassin's Creed game I've, I've played. It's sad to see Altair's life go down that way, and you know, the tragedies that, like, you know, he's been through. But I think that if they improved the characters and improved on the storytelling just a bit, I would put it a bit higher. So, next game. Assassin's Creed 3. Ooh, Assassin's Creed 3. This one's an interesting one for me. Uh, because... Um, there's a lot of, like, com... There's a lot. Of, it's there's a lot of interesting things about Assassin's Creed. They, I'll say that. Um, for one, the, the gameplay is quite good. I really like the gameplay. Uh, the setting that it takes place, the American, uh, yeah, the American Revolution. Again, it's it's somewhat interesting, but the open worlds were boring. I mean, there wasn't really much to New York, Boston, or the outside area. So, I, I just. I think they could have done better on that. Uh, Haytham, though, the beginning part of it, Haytham, was a really interesting character. So sorry, I just remembered something. So, present day revelations, I'll quickly go through that. It's alright, you yeah, know, not... It's, mm, could have done better. But anyhow, back to number three. So, present day on number three. It was actually better, a lot better this time. We actually had some proper gameplay uh, segments as Desmond Miles, so that's one good thing it has going for it. And uh, Hather, uh, the beginning character Hatham, 
he was an interesting character, and I love the plot twist near the like first quarter of the game where it reveals, oh, you've been playing a Templar this entire time. But I do think that it, there were some obvious hints that say, you know, hate them. You know, he's not an assassin; he's a Templar. But if, um, but going into a first time viewing of it, I do actually appreciate it that it does a little cheeky sneaky on you. Um, as for Connor, uh, as much as I like him, he could have been better. I mean, his personality's not much. The voice actor as well could have done better. I mean, he kind of he kind of sounds emotionless, kind of like a brick, like a robot. But um, if I go into a deeper look about him, he's an interesting character. But yeah, as I said, they could have done better. So uh, in terms of the multiplayer for Assassin's Creed 3, I haven't played much of it, so I can't really say. So, with all the things considered, I think I'll put him... Yeah, I'll put him at C. Because, um... As I said before, the modern day segments were greatly improved. Um... The plot twist of it... Really good. Hey, they introduced Haytham, one, uh, one of the, you know, most favoured Assassin's Creed characters. Uh... Gameplay, really, really good. Uh, the open worlds... Could have been better. Could have been better. Uh, anyhow, next one. Assassin's Creed 3, The Tyranny of King Washington. I was alright with it. I mean, it was an interesting kind of concept to see, like, you know, what if King Washington was a mad king. And I did and I did somewhat enjoy, like, the, the powers you would get. But it's a bit of an interesting opinion for you. I would rather prefer an Assassin's Creed without uh, superpowers. I think if you add too much fantasy yeah, or sci-fi elements to an Assassin's Creed, it doesn't really feel like an Assassin's Creed game. But um, with this one, they kind of make an exception to it because it takes place in an alternative reality. Um, but at the same time, it doesn't really make sense why you would drink that and all of a sudden you have the ability to f like fly into the air or just crush enemies you, for some strange reason. It's a bit... Excuse me. So, uh, with all the things considered, um, I think I'll put it, uh, yeah, I'll put it on the same level as Assassin's Creed 3. It, you, you know, it's it's pretty much the same thing. Again, Connor could have been better. Um, the open world, they're a bit better. You know, um, everything's a bit different because of King George Washington. Uh, it's an episodic episode uh, DLC, so episode one takes place in a different play, uh, t episode, uh, sorry. Episode 1 takes place in the outdoors. Episode 2... Um... Boston? Yeah, and then episode 3, New York. And in each area, you can see, like, the regime... Uh, King George's regime, you know, um... Being cruel on, on the people. And... It was just an interesting concept. I, I really enjoyed it, so... Yeah, we'll leave it at that. So, the remastered version of Assassin's Creed 3... It's D. Now you may think to yourself, why do I put it on the D list? Well, um, when I got it on the P on the PlayStation 4, I saw it on the market for like £15. And I was like, yeah, I might as well give it a go, see what it's like. And I just had constant troubles with it. Um, I don't know. There were like loads of sound bugs and soundish, Yeah, just sound bugs. Um, there, was, there was a time where I went into a church and you could hear the people you know, rowing, and then as soon as Connor exits, normally the sound would quieten and it would end, but it just kept going and going and going, so it just, it ruined, you know, the immersion of the game. Plus the models kind of look like plastic, I'm not gonna lie, they, they look like they were made out of, like, clay. So, I think the development team should have spent more time on Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered. So, Assassin's Creed Liberation. Uh, what do I say about Liberation? It's my least favorite Assassin's Creed game, if I had to be brutally honest. Um, if there was like another lower tier to this list, I probably should have put down, uh, like, totally for... I would have put Assassin's Creed Altair is probably lower. Uh, the reason why I don't really like this game so much is because it... Everyone fe It just feels too alien. Like, I don't know why. The characters speak like they're on a different planet. Um, Aviel de Grand Prix... 
not there's not much to her if I had to be brutally honest I mean she's search she's searching for her mother and then like I think near halfway through the game you find your mother and all of a sudden it's just gone dealt with you're like wait wait hang on isn't isn't this supposed to be like an important moment because I just found her isn't this the whole point of the you know her story to find her mother but all of a sudden it's just gone it's like dealt with there's not much of a Templar aspect to it either it didn't really the Templars were not that interesting at all. Uh, Agate, the Assassin Mentor, again, he's a poor character. He could have done a lot better. The gameplay of it, it's all right. You know, there's not much to it. It, I think Assassin's Creed Liberation originally came, it originally came out for the PS Vita so as a sideline to Assassin's Creed uh, 3. So, uh, that you don't really get much for it. Uh, New Orleans, the, old, the open world, not much, not much. The only kind of good thing I can really say about Assassin's Creed Liberations is that um, um, I do like the idea of uh, there were three different types of outfits you could have for Aveline. There was like her normal assassin outfit, her prisoner, no, her, no, prisoner, sorry, her, her slave outfit, I think that's what you call it, I don't know, um, and then there's royal outfit. Um, and each different one had like sets of weapons and sets of skills you could do. So for the assassin outfit, you could free run, you can easily run around, and you had all your gadgets available. But uh, the guards would always uh, be on alert for you. It wasn't all like, you know, as soon as they see you, they're in combat. It was more like they would see you and the icon would go yellow and they would try to investigate. Um, the slave outfit, uh, the guards won't notice you. Well, the guards will notice you if you do anything, you know, suspicious. But if you're just walking around, nothing will happen. But if you start climbing buildings, then the, cl the guards will notice. Um, you could easily infiltrate settlements by, like, picking up crates to make you look like a worker. Uh, and as for the beauty outfit, um, that's probably the most interesting one. You can't free run in it. You can only, like, slightly jog. And you only have your hidden blade and your darts I think yeah and that's it you don't get anything else um, I do think that it could have they could have done better with that kind of gameplay element but as it is I, I put it at the bottom I didn't really enjoy my time with liberation and then as, I suppose as a quick fire the HD version it's the same thing um, again I didn't enjoy my time on it at all so Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Now, this is a really good game. Uh, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag um, really got me into Assassin's Creed. Like, if Brotherhood got me into the series, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag made, made me completely fall in love with the series. The, <laughs> the open world is absolutely amazing. I like the fact that you get to be a pirate in the Caribbean and meet all famous pirate figures like Blackbeard, uh, Ben, not Benjamin Franklin, he's not a pirate. Um, Benjamin Hornigold, that's it. Just, it was really interesting to me to see all these, like, pirate characters being used in this game. And Edward Kenway as well, he's a really, really interesting character. He's, again, he kind of starts off like Altair, he's kind of like cocky, he does his own way, but eventually, throughout the game, you see him mature, and he realizes his mistakes, and does a complete, and, like, improves himself greatly. I do like it how um, kind of takes the mick out of the whole like assassin and Templar order. <laughs> In the beginning, he's kind of just like the, the Templars are like, "We are here to you know uh, to make a new world." He's like, "Yeah, sure, <laughs> yeah, yeah." Uh -huh. uh, and uh, by the way, when do I get paid? <laughs> and, it's the, and then when it comes to the assassins, um, he takes the mickey out of their motto, just like, "Well, you said everything was permit, everything is permitted, so." I'm just saying the naval combat. Oh yeah, naval combat, absolutely fantastic. The modern day segments, yeah, they're all right. I mean, I suppose that modern day wasn't really their first concern with Black Flag. I mean, you couldn't really do much in the modern world. You're kind of just like a typical employee. So, but I would say it's passable. You know, um, if your main focus on is on the past, you can't really, you don't want to focus on the modern day too much. Well. There needs to be a nice balance, I think. You need to have a good, you know, Assassin's Creed proper past gameplay. And you also need to balance it out with, like, you know, m good modern day gameplay. and uh, Which I think Brotherhood is done, you know, does well. Um, 
for Black Flag, yeah, it's alright. Yeah, it's alright. So I think I'll put it in the A list. Because again, the naval combat and the combat in general, absolutely amazing. I really enjoyed it. The open world, fantastic. Customizable options, fantastic. It it truly felt like a pirate game and it felt good to like, you know, craft holsters for your pistols, all the cool different outfits you can get for Edward and customize your ship to the way you want it. I really enjoyed it. So, Assassin's Creed Rogue. I said multiple times before, um, you've seen my Let's Play, you've seen like my mini review on it on my top 5, you know, favorite Xbox 360 games. Assassin's Creed Rogue is one of my favorite Assassin's Creed games, no doubt about it. I like the I like the story of it, how it shows the other aspects of the war. Shay's a really interesting character, the the customizable options were really good. And it's this, it's pretty much the same as Black Flag, but except it was a bit different, so I I would have to put Assassin's Creed Rogue on the S tier list. I there's not much I can say, just an absolutely fantastic game, and I would highly recommend if you if you're a, if you're an Assassin's Creed fan, go and check Assassin's Creed Rogue. Fantastic music, fantastic characters, fantastic gameplay. Just, mm, I love it so much. So, the next one, Assassin's Creed Rogue Remastered. Again, just just put it on, just put it here. Um, I would say that if people were to give me the option, if I had Assassin's Creed Rogue and Assassin's Creed Rogue Remastered, which one would I get? I would say just go for the remastered because I don't really know if you could really call it a remastered. It just adds all the DLC into one, so you might as well just go for the remastered. It, it feels actually uh, I'll put it on the A list because it, it doesn't really feel like a remaster. It just kind of feels like a a whole collection in one. You just get more outfits and you get the DLC. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing. The graphics. They're all right, you know. I don't, I don't think, I don't know if there is a difference between the two, but um, yeah, I would, I put it, I would put it there, just as it is. So, Assassin's Creed Unity. I remember the intense backlash that Assassin's Creed Unity got. It was an utter like a shit show when it came out. Oh god. But I, I think nowadays, as of today, six years later, people are signed to. You know, they're signed to forgive Assassin's Creed Unity. It's fixed most of its bugs now. Well, except for the multiplayer. I think they could, you know, there's still a bit of bugs in the multiplayer. Um, I think they could have done better in the multiplayer. They could have, they could have fixed it a bit more. But I do appreciate, I really do appreciate Assassin's Creed Unity. It truly felt like the, new, the next generation of Assassin's Creed. Paris is absolutely well detailed. And the dedication of, you know, of the team... The, you know, the dedication of the team who went into making, you know, Paris. You know, you have to give them credit. It, it looks really, really good. The customizable options as well, it was really good as well. Like, I like it how you could decide You could decide on what type of assassin you want to be. Uh, do you want to be a, a confrontational kind of assassin? Just, you know, tank your way through the settlement to get to your target? Or are you more of a stealthy kind of person? Or are you more of a ranged kind of person? You know, it gave you different gadgets, different skills to use, different, you know, um, pieces of, uh, yeah, gear, equipment. Yeah, pieces of equipment. You get to, it's, the customizable feature of it is absolutely great. I really do appreciate it. Some of the arm, some of the pieces, they're not my favorite, you know, it's, they're a bit ugly, but, you know, it, it gets by, it gets by. So, as for the story, it's alright, you know, um, could have been better. I mean, Arno, Arno's an alright character, he, he's, he, he, he just, uh, there's no easier way to say it, he's just a total simp. <laughs> he's a total simp for Elise, the, uh, the female Templar, like, <laughs> he blatantly dis disregards the rules of the assassins for all for the sake of this one girl that he loves, and it, 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 he's a simp, okay, you don't trust simps. <laughs> So, but you know what? The chemistry between Arno and Elise, it's actually, it's a, it's all right. Again, it's all right. I mean, Elise is like, you know, it could have been better. Uh, like, Arno, the whole point of Arno for Elise is that, you know, he feels guilty for letting her father die, so he's trying his best to protect her. But Elise is like, no, 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 no. So, it's kind of like, but I'm trying to help you. What, what, what don't you see that? <laughs> But I, but I sound like a simp myself, but uh, just ignore that. <laughs> so, 
Um, and of all the things considered, um, I would put Assassin's Creed Unity... Yeah, I'll put him on the B list. You know, on the same level of Assassin's Creed 1. You know, it's it set the foundation of what the next generation of Assassin's Creed is. And it's got it's got its own merits to stand up on. I just think that the, the storytelling and the characters could have been better. And funny enough, I don't think there is much of the modern day section at all in Assassin's Creed Unity. There's only a couple of times where the modern day plot comes in. But it's not that interesting at all. I, com I really completely forgot about the whole modern day plot. So... I guess we'll just move on. Uh, so, Assassin's Creed Unity, Dead Kings. Again, it's just on the same level of Assassin's Creed Unity. It's it's a good DLC. Um, there's no like you know fantasy kind of elements with like the tyranny of King George Washington. I like the whole aftermath of the French Revolution. You go digging around in the king's tomb, and there were there were in new interesting enemy types, and they introduced a new weapon, the guillotine gun which was really good, and I do like it a lot. So, I get that, there's not much to it. I, I think it's a good DLC, and I, I fairly enjoy my time with it. Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Um, well, for you, you can get me. So, uh, there's an interesting thing about Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Um, it's kind of forgettable, if I have to be honest. Um, there's not much really for Assassin's Creed Syndicate because it takes place during the Victorian era in London. And, and whilst I love an Assassin's Creed that takes place in my home country, Britannia, um, I do think that it could have been better. Like, uh, the villains are stereotypical. You know, I mean, for God's sake, the main villain has a, you know, mustache like that. You know, how stereotypical can you be? Um, I do like Jacob and Evie, though. The chemistry between them is really good. Um, the, the open world, it's alright, you know, um, controlling your gangs, again, I do like that aspect of, like, having your own gang, and you get to upgrade your gang and control settlements and do stuff like that, I do appreciate that. Uh, the customizable options, again, they're alright, you know, they're not, it's not much. I, I think Assassin's Creed Syndicate was kind of like a, um, a scapegoat. Because, um, round right about the time, Assassin's Creed Unity was still getting heavily, like, bashed on. Um, so, when Assassin's Creed Syndicate came out, I get the feeling they were trying to, like, say, uh, you know, here's something else to pass the time. So, th uh, there was not much added to Syndicate. So, I think I would put them... Oh, yeah, I'll put it on the C list? Yeah, I'll put it on the, on the C list. Actually, no. Uh, it's a bit difficult with this one. A bit difficult. Hmm. Actually, yeah, to give it a benefit of the doubt, I'll go for the, the C tier. Because, like I said, the chemistry between uh, Jacob and Evie is really funny. And I do enjoy that. Uh, the outfits, I do like a lot. I like the whole, like, you know, the black trench coat and, you know, the, the steampunk kind of aesthetic to the hidden blade. Um... Again, I just think that the the open world could have been better. Um, yeah, the open world could use a bit few more tweaks. Um, and the customizable options, I wish there was more. And I wish it was kind of longer. It felt kind of short. The se the sequences were kind of short. Um, it's a, I guess you could say the same for Assassin's Creed Rogue. But with Assassin's Creed Rogue, the characters were actually interesting. So it kind of distracted. It kind of distracted me long enough from you know for it being short. But, anyhow, um, I guess let's go on to the next one. So, Assassin's Creed Syndicate, uh, Jack the Ripper. This one was actually quite interesting. I do actually like it a lot. I would say it's somewhat better than the main game because um, Jack the Ripper is an interesting character to me. Um, he's such an interesting um, like myth to talk about because n to this day, nobody knows who Jack the Ripper was in Victorian times. Now, I can have Assassin's Creed did a little bit of a twist on it, saying he was trained by the assassins, but because he was so mad, you know, he, he, went, off, he just went off his rocker. I do... <laughs> it's going to make me sound like a psychopath, but I do enjoy the Jack the Ripper gameplay of it, though. The whole, like, when you're, try when you're chasing the target, you, there was like a psychological effect around you where it was... Um, it was a creepy aspect to it, and I think that's what many games should do. Make Jack the Ripper this scary-looking figure. This scary, anonymous-looking figure that nobody knows who he is. 
And by the end of it, of the game, we still don't get his face. We still really are not shown what his true identity was. And I do appreciate it a lot. So, um, on to the next game then. So, Assassin's Creed Origins. Ah, oh, Assassin's Creed Origins. Mmm, brilliant game. Absolutely brilliant game. Um, what do I like about Assassin's Creed Origins? Well, for one thing, it shows us where the assassins come from. It shows us the motivation of the assassins. And Bayek is such a good character. To, like, his whole journey throughout the entire game, you feel every bit of sorry for him as he goes through this, like, you know, corrupted land of Egypt. And furthermore, he he's such a good father figure. Like, the whole po you f the whole point of the game is that, like, you're, you're getting revenge for your son um, against this, like, ancient order. That's funny enough, not the Templars, but a different kind of order. So it was nice to see something different. You know, it wasn't Assassins versus Templars. It was something different, and I, I do appreciate that. Um, you know, it's good to, you know, put in something new. Um, the all RPG element of the game, I would say it's pretty good. You know, um, I like it how you can, you, again, same with Unity and Syndicate, you get to decide, you know, what kind of we weapon user you are. Do you want to go for a sword? Do you want to go for a mace? Do you want to go for, like, uh, twin blades? I do appreciate it a lot. The hidden blade customization, again, I like it, you know. Um, I do think that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. I think Aya's segments were crap. I'm not gonna lie, I don't really like Aya. She's not that much of an interesting character. I mean, guaranteed, she's an important figure considering, you know, she's one of the Assassin's Tombs. But, I don't really find her that interesting, if I have to be honest. Um, I, I would say, from the beginning part of it, she's not automatically hateable. You know, I do... There is some part of it that I like about her. The fact that, like, you know, she... Uh, well, uh, she becomes, like, the Grand Master in... The Grand Master of the Assassins in Rome. And she was the one who assassinated Cleopatra. I do like that. Um, I just think that, like, her character could have been better. I think near the... Uh... About maybe three quarters of the way when you have to play as her. I really don't like it because you spend a lot of time like upgrading Bayek, you know, you get all these powerful weapons and for the game to slap you in the face and go, here's Aya with like, you know, probably the lowest graded twin blade you can get and a hunting bow and it's just, I don't like it, I really don't, I don't like it how this, the, the game just slaps you in the face and here, here, here's a weaker character for you and the fact that like it takes a takes away your most of your abilities near the end of the game as well I, again I didn't appreciate it and also it kind of broke history a bit I don't like it when if you're playing a historical game that's supposed to represent what it was supposed to be like and you take an important moment like Julius Caesar's assassination and you play it as of like oh I was the one who first started it when there's so many history books and documentaries that say no then it doesn't really, it, it loses that historical aspect of it. But then again, um, it's only a small minor problem I have with the game. Everything else I do enjoy. Uh, there is one more thing though I, I have to address. It's the, it's the modern day part of it. I'm going to be honest, I don't like Layla. I really don't. I think Layla's a terrible character. She seems like a Mary Sue. You know, uh, she was the first, she was the one who built the Animus in the Assassin's Creed movie. Uh, you know, she did this, she can do that, she can do this, it's... Ugh, I don't like it, I really don't. And, and I also just find it too convenient how she finds Bayek, and then, um, even though there's, like, a bit of a cliff, she could just get, like, her technical equipment to make a rope, and there you go, you found Aya. I, I, I think this could have been, that could have been better. That could have been better. Um, there was something else about her. I'll tell you what, we'll just, we'll just move on to the next game. I'm sure it'll come back. But, anyhow, for for where I place Origins, I would place it on the A-list. Again, just really fantastic, you know, gameplay. Really fantastic characters. The open world was absolutely fantastic. I love it. I just think they could have done better with Aya, and they could have done better with her gameplay. And the modern day segment, they could have done better. 
So, on to the next one. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Oh, Odyssey. <laughs> Odyssey is an interesting one because it's very controversial in the Assassin's Creed fandom because it it does it's the common thing I see about it is that it's a good game, but it's not a good Assassin's Creed game. Uh, and when I re recently replayed it to like you know have my opinions for this video. I can kind of see why, if I had to be brutally honest. The it doesn't really feel like an Assassin's Creed game. It kind of just feels like it's its own thing. There's a lot of you know things I take with the game. The first first part of it is the RPG element of the game. Um, I don't think there ever should be a dialogue tree in an Assassin's Creed game because um, it's very it could be very contradicting. So, for instance. Um, in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, you have the choice to either be a kind mercenary or a, or a bit of a dick. Yep. So, so it doesn't really it doesn't really make any sense that the game parades you as this you know stoic hero when you're when you can brutally murder civilians and then all of a sudden you're you're kind towards a child and people like you even though they just forgot that like you probably murdered a bunch of civilians for no good reason. Um, the RPG element of the game, yeah, uh, as I said, the RPG, um, the exploration of the game, it's, it's bare, like, I don't know, I didn't feel like I was immersed in Greece, there was not, like, there wasn't that many people around to make it, you know, immersive, it just felt like, oh, there's another NPC, or there's another NPC, I'll just go over here and get the... So I felt really bored with the open world. Like it's a, it's very, very incredibly big. I do give them credit for that, but I think they should have put in a lot more detail in, like you know what, you know they should have gone into more into what makes a good open world. You know, take it from Assassin's Creed Brotherhood or Rogue. What makes a good open world? The open exploration and the fact that you feel immersed in these situations. For Odyssey, there's not much immersion. Like the, the just, I don't know what to say. The it's not good. It could have been better. Um, the fantasy element of the game, they should just get rid of it. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't like the fantasy element. Like the part. The, as soon as they decided in the in the Seal of Atlantis, I'm fine with like, uh, you know, introducing the pieces of Eden because, you know, that that's what makes Assassin's Creed Assassin's Creed. But they kept it minimal. Like. The whole point of Assassin's Creed was to keep it on the historical accuracy and then introduce a little bit of sci-fi elements in the game. But in, th in this one, there's just so much sci-fi fantasy thing that like, it doesn't really feel like historical Greece. You just feel like, oh, I'm in a, oh, I'm in a fantasy Greece land. And like, you fight a bloody sphinx, a um, troll, two trolls. Um, you discover Atlantis, uh, like, there's many, um, uh, special artifacts that let you breathe underwater, it's like, what, what is this? Like, and they were, they were in, they're out in the open, they, you can find them in chests, and it's like, what's the point of, of an, of a historical accurate game, and you just add all these fantasy elements in it, I really don't get it. The, the Spartan and, um, Athenian War, if I had to be honest, it was completely boring. I mean, I love the Spartans. The Spartans were an interesting army. But, I just... The, the, the Peneplesian War, I think that's what it's called. But I could be pronouncing it wrong. It was so boring. Like, the, the, the whole plot doesn't really evolve around it. There's a there's a part of it that it does. But it, it's, it's too pushed to the side. It doesn't... It's I don't like it. I really don't. Um, as for the characters, um, hmm, it's hard to say really, because, like I said, like you can't really describe the characters like as like a whole. Uh, how do I put it? Okay, so if, let's look at it. let's look at Ezio for example. Um, the reason why we like Ezio is because he's very kind throughout the series and he develops over time. With Assassin's Creed Odyssey, you get to decide what your character is, so there's not much character development that you can go for, really. It's because it's up to you what you think, you know, Alexios or Cassandra should be. 
also, I would like to also point out that I'm not a big fan of the whole, um, you know, decide who's the main character. I think they should just keep it to one character and just let it go with that. Um, I do appreciate the whole, um, if you pick Alexios, Cassandra's the villain, but if you pick Cassandra, Alexios is the villain. I do like that kind of concept, but I think, uh, they should have kept it to, like, you know, you're either Alexios or Cassandra, and that's it. Like, you don't pick one of the two. Like, just make a story about that character, then I would be a bit more forgiving. And um, if anybody asks, who did I pick for Odyssey? I picked Alexios. I'm so I picked Alexios because I'm a more historically accurate person. That doesn't make me a horrible person. <laughs> um, plus, I found I looked at a video um, where the be where people were comparing Alexios to Cassandra. Alexios and Cassandra, you know, who would play a better villain. And I think Alexios plays better as the hero. Like, there's more emotion in his acting. Uh, it's it's a funny thing, because when Alexios is the hero, he does a really good job. But when he's the villain, he's... There's not much, you know, to it. But with Cassandra, she plays a good villain. But when you when you pick her as the hero, again, there's not much to it. It's, it, it's like having a fever dream. <laughs> But, um, as for the modern day, again, it was crap. I really didn't like the modern day. Leila, again, is such a horrible character. They could have done a lot better with her. So, with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, uh, it's hard to say with Odyssey. Uh, where would I put it? It's not a terrible game, because there are parts of the game that I do like, but the whole customizable options I do enjoy. And the, the skill tree, it's alright. You know, it's a bit too super powered. Um, there's just a lot of bad things with the game, but there's, at the same time, there is the replayability of the game, like, it's so, there's so, something there that keeps me coming back, but I don't know what it is. Um, it's, it's, it's as people said, you know, it's a good game, but it, it's not a good Assassin's Creed game, so I'll, I'll put it in the D, you know. Yeah, we'll just stick with the with the D option. I'm um, like I said, my opinions on the games, you know, your opinions change over time. But uh, for now, we'll just we'll just put it in the D section. A lot of stuff could have been better um, in the game, but you know, what can you do? Okay, so for the last ever game that I have played, at least, is Assassin's Creed Chronicles Russia. Again, I'm we have to end it on a bad note. I really don't like it. <laughs> Um, I do like the whole way it's set up, the Ru the Russian Revolution. I think there's not a lot of games that are set in the Russian Revolution. I think there's a lot of good potential within that time period. Um, but it, it's kind of segmented to like a 2D scrolling thing. I would rather prefer it if it was more of a 3D environment. Plus, Nikolai, the, the main character, he's um he's a prominent character in the comics, but, he, but to have his... In it, in his uh, video game, you know, place, <laughs> I I forgot what the name, what it's called, debut, that's it. In his video game debut, um, for what I have played, he's alright, you know, there's, there's not much to him, I think, and the gameplay as well, I don't know, I, I found that frustrating, if I had to be brutally honest. There were times where, um, you know, even though the enemy had no chance in seeing me, like, the eyesight was completely far from me. But for some strange reason, they would somehow still see me. I don't know why that happened. Um, I just think that it could have been better. I think uh, the 2D segments of the game uh, should have should have been 3D. Uh, the the character that you accompany as well, she's just a pain. I'm sorry, like I didn't enjoy playing as her. Um, just it just completely frustrated me. So. I would put it on the E list again. It could have been better. Could have been a whole lot better. But uh, I, I think I, yeah, I quit about halfway through the game because I just got frustrated with the mechanics and the story was, and the story was, you know, there's not much on the story. It could have been better, a whole lot better. But yeah, this is my whole tier list of the Assassin's Creed games. Um, like I said, my opinions may change over time, but you are free to disagree with me. Um, as, oh, I actually forgot to mention, 
Um, there was another piece of Assassin's Creed Origins DLC that I actually saved. Yeah, Assassin's Creed Origins, the hidden ones. Again, I would put that in the same column, you know, A level. For, because it showed the beginning origins of the assassins and what Bike was like as an assassin. And it was really good, I really enjoyed it. But anyhow, um, just to put just to put that one to the side. <laughs> um, yeah, there's not much to say. Here's my tier list, here's what I think. Um, what do I think about Assassin's Creed Valhalla? It's, it's interesting, it's got a promise. Um, I just hope that it doesn't uh, do the same thing as Assassin's Creed Odyssey, because um, there, I, there's a lot of people, you know, who say they really like Assassin's Creed um, Odyssey, and I don't blame them. I can see why they might like it, um, you know, but I, I, it's not my thing. I like it how it's set in during the Viking era, and I've been waiting for an Assassin's Creed game for, you know, to be set in the Viking era, because we've got that, you know, that whole Black Flag and Rogue, you know, gameplay segment being naval. Um, and the Vikings did go out and conquer other, like, you know, places. But at the same time, it, it, um, because it came off of Odyssey, uh, there's a bit of a growing concern that it's going to be too much fantasy like um, the gameplay is going to be similar Which I hope it isn't um, The gameplay trailer didn't really offer much It wasn't really much of a gameplay trailer now that I think about it But, but, but regardless I think um, I still have high hopes for the game and I hope that it does better than like you know Odyssey and it be it's a game that uh, It's remembered for a long long time I think I remember reading somewhere that uh, they're not going to make it the same as Odyssey, like they're not going to make those dialogue choices where uh, you could be murdering a bunch of civilians and all of a sudden you're a good guy. Uh, they're going to make the dialogue options uh, in a way that fits the character. So I guess there's that type of reinsurance. Uh, my other concern for the game is the modern day because I really didn't enjoy the modern day segments in Odyssey and I think, and again, I think Layla is a bad character. But if they, if they decide to involve her again, um, I hope that they uh, they make her better. Like, they, they add some kind of, like, flaw to her or, um, or maybe they'll just... Yeah, I don't know what we're going. I'm so completely sorry, this whole video is like, it's me off script, so my opinion is all over the place, so I'll try to like, edit this video as best I can to, you know, not include me just going silent for a whole long time, but regardless, uh, there's my tier list for the games, uh, tell me in the comments how you feel about Assassin's Creed, and uh, you know, let me know if you're looking forward to Valhalla. But anyhow, if you enjoyed this uh, video, why don't you like, comment, favorite, and subscribe to see more content like this. And I'll see you all in the next video. Take care now.